All right, so today we're going to talk about how Tuscan search changed and evolved throughout the entirety of Vanguard. And it all stems basically on one specific point, and that was the March spawn update for the defensive side. Uh, so we'll go over the basic setups on offensive defense and what you know teams would do before and then after of the update and how everything changed. So we'll go here and we'll talk about the spawn. So obviously the offensive spawn hasn't changed still by cell spot. The defensive spawn at the beginning of the game was behind this tank right here. And uh, the, the difference was, you know, after the spawn update, you moved in front of the tank. And, you know, we're going to talk about how this one little spacing created completely different timings and completely changed how the map uh, ended up playing throughout uh, the rest of the season. So let's talk about before the update. Before the update, it was basically, let's get the bomb down A and then play a post plan. You know, the bomb down, you know, quickly on A was the main thing that teams would always do. Um, and it honestly really started right at the start of when the game dropped. You know, Doug Sensor Martin got mean for him in the M tournaments of getting the bomb down quickly. And that was all his job was to do. And, you know, he did his job, got the bomb down. And then they played a post plan, you know, and teams basically did the same thing throughout the entirety of January to March. Um, and we'll take a look at some of those clips. So the basic default setup was, you know, you'd have one guy go out field, one guy go top fire, one guy play outside of maps, and then one guy with the quick plan. So the entirety of this game plan was to get that bomb down as quickly as possible and then play, you know, top fire or if this guy ended up activating towards, you know, the other side of the map, you play for both sides, but we'll get into that. We're playing for this guy top fire. This top fire guy gets the bomb checks, and if he stays alive, you win the round. Simple as that. So at that point, you know, teams were basically thinking to themselves, how can we protect this top fire guy as much as possible? We get the bomb down, but what happens afterwards? So a lot of teams would play, you know, field here, you know, you could also see teams playing cell spot as well, but this is just a main line of defense for the A side of the map. You know, if any teams wanted to rush A side, this guy would at least get the information that they're coming here um, and he would get the timing. So if it's only one guy, you know, teams wouldn't even send one guy just because of how quickly this guy would be able to get the timing on this, uh, this field player. But if you'd send two guys, you know, there was a chance. A lot of the times, you know, you'd get the bomb down, play this guy field just as soon as you get the bomb down, maybe he'd back up to cell spot, and you're just playing for this cut here. You're playing for, for Z to try and see, or basically trying to defend anyone from coming and, and flanking your guy top fire. This guy maps, he play the other side of the map. He's playing the B defense. So, you know, a lot of teams would try and send a few guys maps but as long as you're getting one, you know, you'd play behind this chimney spot or play this credit corner right outside of maps. Or even Simp played this little flower pot spot outside, you know, standing on, on the side of the building um, where he could see the push through and, you know, push through through, through roof and through fire alley uh, without being seen unless you have someone mid. You know, but all of these spots were just playing defense for this one guy top fire. So as long as you're able to get one at least, you know, you did your job. You at least bought time for this fire guy, you know, if they end up sending two or three, which, you know, a few teams did. Um, that was the, the one of the main counters. We'll talk about the main counters. Uh, you're, you're playing for one and you're trying to at least buy time for this, this fire guy to maybe get a trade on him. And if the guy's sell spot or it's guy's field, he plays fire late and tries to get the bomb checks there. To counter this, you know, teams didn't have many options. You know, you'd have your bully out A, you have your bully out B, maybe a bully out mid as well, but you're trying to do something together, obviously. So a lot of teams would end up choosing for that maps play because you're trying to get this trade on the guy playing outside of maps, and then you're going to try and bully out, you know, either through mid or mostly top fire to try and get this top fire guy out. Um, sometimes you'll see, you know, two guys play top fire, one guy go back in case they're playing a cell spot as well, uh, because this cell spot guy is basically their fail safe. So, you know, you'd sometimes have that, you'd sometimes have a double 
or triple out A uh, or field. And at this point, you're playing to try and back this guy down so you can maybe even deny the plant to begin with. So obviously, if you don't even get the, or if the offense doesn't get the bomb down, that's best case scenario. You know, you get this bomb um, down and they can't plant it unless they have to retake the bomb site again. And that's pretty hard for them. So if you're able to kill the bomb carrier before he gets the bomb down, that was the most ideal thing. You know, if you weren't going to bully out A to do that, um, a lot of teams would just double nade um, the A bomb as soon as they knew that someone was on the bomb. So you'd bounce it off, you know, from top church uh, off this pillar or behind this wall and try and double nade the bomb carrier that way. Uh, but, you know, you would see a lot of teams sometimes even just trying to play this cross while they're planning. I believe Seattle would do it where they start planning, play the cross in case they saw two people you know, cross and try to deny this plant, insta get off, go bottom church and go to B. Um, that was a really good option play that Seattle would do. Um, I think that we took that was a, a really good option just to, you know, get the bomb off quickly in case you were getting punished uh, for uh, being, you know, here and planning at A. So that was a really good play that they did. Um, and, you know, that was really it. So you'd have you know your basic setup one guy maps one guy top fire one guy field one guy planning and you know to show you know some stats about how a favored this you know tuscan offense was you know i think it was it was 78 percent of the bomb plants before the patch were being planted at a after the patch that drastically decreases down to 62 percent so a 16 17 percent increase um towards the B site or towards the A site um, in favor of the B site because of one specific change and that was the spawns. So we'll talk about the defensive spawn change here. So now instead of spawning behind the tank, defense is now spawning in front of the tank. And you know, this is just a small, you know, few feet away, but it makes a completely different map entirely. Um, because now defense has the timing to get out mid before the offense and that's that's huge for the defense because instead of you know having to give up mid because the offense would get there quicker than them you know they can attack mid themselves so they you know you could double well you can get inside uh, bottom fire or play under fire you can get inside their side you uh, your own side you you know you have so many options of what you want to do mid that the offense has to just respect that at that point because unless they're going you know four people mid you know two mid alley one's jumping out of out of top fire and one's staying top fire you know you will have the disadvantage side for mid and uh, you know that was huge because you know you have defense playing in inside like their side you or playing inside uh, under fire so if you're going well to try and do something you still have to clear basically both sides of the map um, before you can get even towards A. Um, a lot of teams, you know, after the the spawn change, instead of, you know, quick planning A through mid, you'd send two or three people A, try and bully out A, and then try and quick plan by going around uh, this side you planning safe here. So that was, you know, a lot of teams do that and, and have, you know, still do that today. Uh, just because they can't, they have to respect the fact that they're not going to get out mid as quickly as as a defense. So you know the triple A's is something that teams do. You know you still sometimes have uh, a double A where you're you're going field and trying to plant with this guy watching over you, trying to get to their side you. So instead of tripling out and pulling it out, uh, it's still only a two man job. And if they are only sending one guy, it's it's still possible because you can back this guy down with an AR. But as long as, you know, as long as the spawn stays the same, which obviously will be for the rest of the game and rest of champs, um, you really don't have too many options other than uh, tripling out A, you know, maybe doing a mid hit. A lot of teams now are starting to hit the B side of the map. And I like how how this evolution of, you know, just one spawn change uh, changes completely how teams might play it in. You see a lot of teams now playing inside maps and having the option of either, you know, maybe going out well 
and taking it mid or going con and continuing B. But that option there is something to your advantage because you, the defense doesn't know what you're doing. And if they're just playing a simple spread, you know, the, the typical defense spread nowadays is like one field, one top church, uh, one outside maps, maybe playing here or, or maybe playing a little credit corner, you know, it's really hard for them with this spread to know what you're doing maps because if you're gonna bully out maps, you know, you have one guy maybe watching the cross and maybe he has another guy playing here, but usually it could be, I mean, if they go double mid sometimes, which a lot of teams do, you only have that top church guy watching this cross for you. So um, just the uncertainty that this top church guy has on whether you're gonna, you know, keep going through to B or cutting back A is a big thing. And at this point, you know, a lot of teams are just trying to take the offensive side because if the offense isn't going to take mid, I mean, obviously you're going to take it and you're going to try and play for their side. So, you know, you see some teams pushing throughout to their side, you or playing this little heady after they play field to try and block anyone who's going well. Obviously, you can still nade it, but you still have to check in. And, you know, sometimes you'll, teams will play this ammo spot, so they have to clear both sides. So obviously, you know, you want to take something as a defense to your advantage if this offensive team isn't. I mean, if you're not seeing them A and you're not seeing them mid, obviously they're going to be playing maps or well here and you want to take their side of the map for it because you want to make it as completely impossible for them to plant um, in general, you know, because if they can go well and they can go outside to A and, and try and plant and you have a guy top church, you know, they don't even need to go A, they can go bottom church, try and kill your guy top church, then go B. You know, there are a lot of options for the offense at that time. So you're just trying to play, you know, their side at that point because there's, that's the only thing you can take with, with the advantages you have. You know, you can try and push out field and if they end up going A, you can try and late play a, den a deny of the bomb plant here. Like there's so many options here now. So. I really like how this map changed and just to give you guys some ideas, I wanted to make this a video uh, because, you know, this is a little strategic viewing of how some teams view the map and how one specific change can completely change the entirety of how the map is played.